Did you know the average Roman could store grains for up to five years without getting spoiled? Yet today, a loaf of bread barely lasts a week before turning green with mold. No fridges, no freezers, no supermarkets, just the blazing sun and the constant threat of famine. And yet, the Romans cracked the code of long-term storage, keeping their food fresh for years while we scramble to save leftovers for tomorrow. So, how did they do it? In this video, we'll dive into the top seven methods the Romans used to preserve food without refrigerators. The last method will definitely shock you. Drying in the sun. The sun was one of ancient Rome's best helpers. It gave warmth, helped plants grow, and even helped them keep their food from spoiling. Hold on, how can the sun keep food from spoiling? Well, that is a good question. You see, without refrigerators, Romans had to find other ways to make food last longer. One of the easiest methods was drying food under the hot sun, using the heat energy. Historical accounts show drying food in the sun is the oldest way of preserving food. People have been doing it for over 14,000 years. Early humans who lived in dry, hot places would leave food outside to dry naturally. This method worked well because the heat removed moisture from the food, making it last much longer. Without moisture, bacteria couldn't grow, so the food couldn't get spoiled. Imagine this, a Roman farmer harvesting grapes. If the grapes weren't eaten quickly, they would rot. But if the farmer left them in the sun, they would slowly turn into sweet, chewy raisins that could last for months. You know raisins, right? Those dry, chewy sweets you see in your cakes and bread are actually dried grapes. Not just grapes, this trick worked with other foods too. Romans dried figs, dates, and even fish. By drying their food, they made sure they had enough to eat at home during long journeys and military campaigns. But what about rainy days? Now this is tricky, but the Romans found a way around it. They discovered how to dry food even when the sun wasn't shining and the clouds are gray. They did this by building a special drying house with fire pits inside. You know, heat doesn't come from the sun alone. Fire also does the trick. The heat from the fireplace found in almost every Roman household helped dry their food just like the sun did. Heat wasn't the only method the Romans used to preserve their food. They also used salt. Have you ever eaten salty olives or prosciutto? Now, imagine if salt could do more than just make food tasty. It could also keep it from going bad. Romans discovered that covering meat or fish with salt would draw out moisture and stop bacteria from growing. This trick is called curing. Unlike how you could go to the store and get meat in small quantities just for a meal, the Romans didn't have that pleasure. They had to have excess meat, and honestly, it was nearly impossible to finish a full cow or goat in just one day. That is where curing or salting comes in. How is this done? Well, the meat is generously covered with lots of salt and either kept in the sun or kept aside in a secluded place. I know what's on your mind, all that salt. The meat most definitely will be very salty when cooked. That's never the case. The meat would actually be very tasty when cooked. All the salt does is remove all the moisture in the meat and prevent bacteria from growing in the meat. It acts like a shield that prevents the meat from getting bad and also gives silver dripping flavor. During battles, Roman soldiers needed food that wouldn't spoil, so they ate salted pork and fish on their long journeys. One of the most famous Roman foods was garum, a fermented fish sauce made by salting fish and letting them break down in the sun. It was used like ketchup. Romans put it on everything. Even today, foods like prosciutto and salted cod, bacalao, are made using these ancient techniques. Sunning and salting has proved to be a very good preservative method. Which is your favorite? Don't answer that because you might just change your mind after learning this next method. Smoke. Imagine you're a Roman soldier marching under the hot sun. Fresh food is a luxury you can't afford. But in your pack, you carry something that won't spoil. Smoked meat. This meat has been on the road with you for weeks or even months. Yet it's still very delicious to eat. How did the Romans manage to keep food fresh for so long? The secret is a simple but brilliant process. 
called smoking. When the Romans used salt, the meat or fish would be rubbed with salt or soaked in salty water. This pulled out moisture and stopped bacteria from growing and made the food last longer. But salt alone wasn't enough, so they turned to smoke. The salted food was hung in a smokehouse or over a fire, where thick smoke curled around it for hours, sometimes even days. This did two important things. It dried the meat even more and coated it in invisible chemicals that prevented rot. The result? Food that could survive the heat, the cold, and the long journeys. For this process, they also used firewood flavors. The Romans knew that different woods gave different flavors. Oak created a strong, smoky taste that helped preserve food for a long time. Beech added a milder, slightly sweet touch. If they wanted something uniquely Roman, they used olive wood, which gave the meat a rich Mediterranean aroma. And for a bold, spicy taste, they burned juniper. The choice of wood turned preservation into an art, making smoked food not just practical, but delicious. With the right mix of salt and smoke, the Romans could make their food last for weeks or even months. Soldiers carried smoked pork and sausages on long marches. Sailors packed smoked fish for their sea voyages. Farmers stored smoked meats for the cold winter months. The Romans may not have had refrigerators, but with fire, salt, and patience, they found a way to keep food fresh and last even up to a year. Now what if they wasted something chilled or cool? Storage and cooling Even in the warm Mediterranean climate, the Romans developed innovative methods to keep food cool and fresh. One of their most effective strategies was the use of underground storage rooms, known as horia. In ancient Rome, keeping food safe and ready to eat was a big challenge, especially in a city with over a million people. That's where horia came in. These were large public warehouses that stored everything from grain and olive oil to wine and other important supplies. Although the word horia originally referred to granaries, these buildings held much more than just wheat. By the time the Roman Empire was at its peak, the city of Rome had nearly 300 horia to keep up with its massive food demands. Some of these warehouses were truly enormous. With the Horia Galbana being one of the largest, it had 140 rooms on the ground floor alone, covering 225,000 square feet, which is about the size of four football fields. These warehouses played a crucial role in feeding the people of Rome. The government managed a system called the Annona Publica, which ensured that the city always had enough food, especially grain, for its citizens. To give you an idea of how well stocked these warehouses were, when Emperor Septimius Severus died in 211 AD, he left behind enough food in the Horea to feed Rome's population for seven years. These structures were designed to store grains, olives, wine, and other perishable goods, protecting them from heat, moisture, and pests. By building these cellars below ground, where temperatures remained more stable, Romans were able to extend the shelf life of essential food supplies. However, for wealthier Romans and the imperial elite, storing food at cool temperatures wasn't enough. Some wanted to keep things truly cold. To achieve this, they imported ice from the Alps, a remarkable feat for the time. Large blocks of ice were transported over long distances using insulated carts and were then stored in deep pits covered with straw or sawdust. These natural insulators slowed down the melting process, allowing the ice to last for months. In some cases, Roman emperors and the wealthy built ice houses, also called glaciarium, to store snow and ice throughout the summer. These structures functioned similarly to early refrigeration units, allowing them to chill drinks and preserve delicate foods. The use of ice was not just practical, but also a symbol of luxury. Only the richest citizens could afford such indulgences. Next, let's get a bit scientific. Fermentation. Now, this one might sound a little weird, but it's super cool. Did you know that tiny, invisible creatures called microorganisms can help keep food fresh? 
Romans discovered that letting certain foods sit for a while would turn them into something new and even more delicious. The technique the Romans used is called fermentation, and it has become one of the Romans' key methods for preserving food. This process allowed them to store food for long periods without refrigeration, making it an essential technique for feeding their growing empire. But why did they rely on fermentation, and how did they do it? For example, let's start with what we all know, grapes. If this fruit was left to sit, they turned into wine. So fermented grapes produce wine. The Romans loved wine and stored it in clay jars called amphorae. They also made cheese by letting milk ferment, and they also mastered the art of making bread with yeast, which made it light and fluffy. Back then, their bread looked plain, dry, and flat. It was everything different from what you'll find in stores today. Fermentation has helped prevent decay by creating an acidic or alcoholic environment where harmful bacteria can't grow. Also, fermented foods lasted much longer, which was crucial for feeding soldiers on long campaigns and for surviving harsh winters or food shortages. Also, the Romans enjoyed the rich, tangy, and complex flavors that fermentation added to food, making it more desirable. Fermented foods are easier to digest and contain beneficial bacteria that help with gut health. Though they didn't understand microbiology, Romans knew fermented foods were good for digestion. Now, for the not-so-obvious reason, which is money, fermented foods, like wine and fish sauce, were highly valued and widely traded across the empire, boosting commerce. Till date, these items are of great financial value. Now, let's look at how different foods were fermented. One of the most famous Roman fermented products was wine. Grapes were crushed, and their juice was left to ferment in clay jars amphorae. The natural sugars turned into alcohol, preserving the drink for years. Romans also fermented milk to create different types of cheese, which provided a long-lasting source of protein and calcium. Fermentation didn't just preserve food, it also made it tastier and healthier. Pickling Have you ever eaten a pickle? That crunchy, sour snack exists because of an ancient method called pickling. Thousands of years ago, Romans discovered that soaking food in vinegar or brine kept it from spoiling. Romans loved pickled olives, cucumbers, onions, and even fish. They stored them in clay pots to ensure they had food that wouldn't spoil. Some historians believe that pickled foods helped Roman soldiers stay strong during battles. Pickling was one of the Romans' favorite methods of food preservation. By soaking foods in brine, also called salt water or vinegar, they prevented spoilage and created delicious, long-lasting snacks. This method allowed them to store food for months, making it especially useful for soldiers, travelers, and city dwellers who needed a reliable food supply. Pickled foods could last for months or even years without spoiling. Roman soldiers carried pickled vegetables and fish to stay nourished during long campaigns. And in some Roman homes, it was a quick snack, just like your chips and cookies, but this time it was healthy. Pickling sure gave the food a tangy, salty, and sometimes spicy taste that the Romans enjoyed. Apart from its taste, pickled foods aided digestion and provided important nutrients during seasons when fresh produce was scarce. Olives are one of the most common pickled foods in Rome. Once soaked in brine to keep them fresh, they can be consumed at any time. Similar to modern pickles, cucumbers were preserved in vinegar and spices. They tasted just like the pickle you have at home. Onions and garlic also didn't leave this chat, but this time they are mostly used to treat illness because the jar is pickled for both flavor and medicinal benefits. Some fish were salted and pickled creating preserved seafood products. Fruits, like pears and dates, were preserved in vinegar or honey to last longer. Pickling allowed Romans to enjoy their favorite foods year-round and helped sustain their vast empire. Honey In ancient Rome, sugar was rare, but the Romans had something just as valuable, honey. This golden liquid wasn't just a sweetener, it was one of their best natural preservatives. Honey helped keep food fresh for months, 
It does almost the same function as the salt. It pulls out moisture and creates an environment where bacteria couldn't grow. They used honey to preserve fruits and nuts, turning them into sweet treats that lasted through the seasons. They would soak figs, dates, apples, or walnuts in honey, sealing them in clay jars. Over time, the honey infused the food with flavor while keeping it from spoiling. These honey-preserved foods were perfect for Roman feasts and sweets for those with a sweet tooth. Now, honey wasn't just for fruits. It was also used to preserve meat. The Romans discovered that coating meat in honey and storing it in sealed containers kept it fresh for weeks. One of the most famous examples was a honey-roasted ham, where the meat was covered in honey and slow-cooked to create a flavorful glaze. This technique not only added taste and filled the room with aroma, but also acted as a preservative. Did you know the Romans also made an early version of jam? Instead of using sugar, they boiled fruit with honey to create a thick, sticky, yummy spread. This jam could be stored in jars and used for months, just like modern preserves. It was often enjoyed with bread or cheese. The next time you spread jam on your toast or enjoy honey-glazed meat, remember, you're tasting a method that's been around for thousands of years. Let's see a method that's way different from what we've been discussing. Sealing food tight. Without modern packaging, the Romans had to find creative ways to seal food tightly to keep it from spoiling. They used a variety of methods to protect their food from air, moisture, and pests, ensuring it remained fresh for long periods. Romans didn't have cans containers, but they had clay jars called amphorae that kept food fresh. They sealed these jars with wax or resin to keep air out and prevent spoilage. Why did the Romans seal food? One reason is that exposure to air caused food to rot quickly, so sealing it kept it fresh longer. Also, it provided protection from pests, rats, insects, and other animals that were common threats to stored food. Also, sealed containers helped traders and soldiers transport food across long distances. By sealing food properly, Romans could maintain its taste and quality for months or even years. Now let's see how the Romans seal their food. The Romans used large clay jars called amphorae. Oh, we've talked a little bit about this jar. These jars were sealed with wax. These are not the regular hair removal ones, you know, the Romans used beeswax. And it came from honeybee hives. To seal jars or amphorae, they melted beeswax and poured it over the opening, creating a protective layer. Sometimes, they mixed it with resin or olive oil for flexibility. This method preserved honey, oil, wine, and fruits, making them last for months. They also used resin or clay stoppers to keep air out. For liquids like wine, they coated the inside of amphorae with pitch, which is resin from trees, to prevent leaks and oxidation. Romans sometimes buried sealed amphorae underground to keep them cool and fresh, especially in hot climates. Wealthier Romans used wooden barrels or metal containers for dry foods like grains and spices, ensuring they stayed dry and pest-free. Meat and fruit were sometimes covered in salt or honey, which acted as a natural barrier against bacteria and moisture. By mastering these sealing techniques, the Romans were able to store and transport food across their vast empire, ensuring a steady food supply for their cities and armies. Many of these methods are still used today in modern food preservation. Even though we have refrigerators and freezers today, we still use many of the Romans' methods. We still dry fruit, cure meat, ferment wine, pickle vegetables, and store food in airtight containers. The Romans were incredibly smart, and their discoveries still help us enjoy food today. So, next time you eat a pickle, a piece of cheese, or a spoonful of honey, think about the long history behind it. Food preservation isn't just about keeping food fresh. It's about survival, adventure, and the amazing creativity of ancient Rome.